Abortion is always a hot topic. We're going to get into it, but also a hot topic are biological women and the protection of their spaces in sports. We see more and more biological men, now trans women, competing against biological women. I can't believe this is happening and growing at the rate it is, and neither can Senator Tommy Tuberville. He's trying to bring attention to it, trying to put a stop to it, but he knows that the Senate probably won't listen. He's also been controversial. Uh, his pro-life stance kept him from some military appointments, and it was a very interesting and rough time for him. We're going to hold his feet to the fire on that as well. Tommy Tuberville, the senator, the coach, is next. Welcome to the Michelle Tafoya podcast. I always want to address you as coach, Tommy Tuberville, but you're a senator, so I feel like I need to say senator. Do you have a preference? <laughs> oh, coach, please call me coach, Michelle. I tell you, and everybody up here calls, calls me coach. So it's, uh, I guess I've earned that after 40 years of dealing with knotheads uh, every day. <laughs> but it's, uh, no, it's, uh, it's fun to be called a coach. You know, John Madden, the late great, uh, told me once that once someone is a coach, they are always a coach and you should address them as such. And I love the hell out of that man. So I, I do that. So coach, uh, Senator, you have introduced the Protection of Women in Olympic and Amateur Sports Act. It sounds pretty clear cut. Can you tell us? No, I, of course you can tell us. What, is, what does this act say? I can't believe we're having to talk about this, Michelle. I can't either. It, it's just, you know, I feel so sorry for uh, the girls and women uh, in sports right now because Kind of like her border, you know, it's being attacked and the girls or women are being attacked. Uh, they don't want any genders on the left. But last year, about this time, I, I, I uh, introduced legislation to protect women and girls in sports. <clears throat> Just when all this nonsense started about uh, biological boys competing against women and girls. So now the last month or so, the Olympic Committee stepped out on a limb and said, ah, we're just going to let each individual sport uh, decide their own fate, whether biological men and, and boys can uh, compete against women. Well, uh, lo and behold, uh, the Boxing Commission in the Olympics decided, yeah, oh yeah, we're going to let men box against uh, women in, in the Olympics. It makes no sense. It's very unsafe. Uh, but this bill basically is trying to get out there. Again, Chuck Schumer cared nothing about women. Uh, matter of fact, they attack women in almost everything that they do. He's the leader of the Senate. He brings all the bills to the floor. Uh, my first uh, Protect Women and Girls in Sports Act didn't make it to the floor. Uh, and this one won't make it to the floor. But we have to keep letting people know what is going on. The craziness, uh, the attack on no matter what it is, uh, the Democrats are attacking everything that our country really stands for. And we need to protect women. And now that Joe Biden's going after, he's continually going after Title IX. It's, it's, it's astonishing to me. Why is it that Chuck Schumer won't bring this up? He doesn't, is it that he doesn't want to give this a victory? Well, the first thing, you got to remember where they're coming from. Uh, they're uh, totally against family. They're totally against the nuclear family. Uh, they don't want marriage. You think all they, Democrats are against the family? Uh, I think most are going that way. Uh, we have several uh, senators up here that have voted with me on several things uh, that have to do with women from the Democratic side. But most, uh, either they want to just get reelected or they just want to go along to get along on this craziness. And most of them are progressives. They're socialist, communist. I don't know what you call them, but they hate our country the way it is and they want to change it. And so uh, what better way to change our country, just go after family, divide the family, go after sports. Because sports, Michelle, you know as well as I do, it teaches respect, it teaches uh, discipline, it, it teaches camaraderie, it teaches people to uh, learn how to lose, learn how to win, how to work as a teammate. They want to destroy all that because it's one of the few things that really they can't control unless they find a way to do it, and they're finding a way to do it through attacking women. Well, that is an interesting look at it because I was talking to some people just in the last 24 hours and we were talking about the fact that sport is one of the few institutions left, maybe the only one, that that can't survive without meritocracy, right? You cannot succeed 
as a college athlete, as a pro athlete, unless you're good at your job. You have to be able to throw the football. You have to be able to block. You have to be able to tackle. And you have to be better than the other team in order to win. Wins put people in the seats. Wins generate fandom, all of that. So sports is still based on meritocracy. And I think, I, I wonder if, you know, that's in this calculus that, you know, now you're you're diminishing a, whim, a woman's merit in her sport if you can insert trans women into that sport. I, I think you're on, you're, you're right on about that. A, again, an attack on women's sports is a t- an attack on all sports because what's going to happen, uh, you know, with these uh, young boys or men dressing in the same dressing room as young girls or women, it's going to cause families to say, listen, our daughter's not getting involved in that. We don't want them in sports. And it's the best thing, Michelle, the best thing. I started coaching back in 1977, many years ago. Title IX had just started. And it's the best thing that's probably ever come out of this this, uh, uh, clown show up here, what we call Washington, D.C. The best bill ever come out because it made women's and men's sports equal in terms of funding, coaching, facilities. And the the uptick of women's sports has been phenomenal. Now... There's an attack on it because they feel like if they can control women's sports, it will control all sports. It's about entertainment. But at the end of the day, it's about, as you said, learning and working your way to the top, learning work ethic. And the and and you're not giving it because of equity uh, of position. You're giving it because you earn the damn thing. Right. And uh, because as a coach, people used to ask me, are, are, are you prejudiced? Or, you know, listen. I'm for winning because that kept my job. And so mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to play the best people that do the right things, that work together, that learn how to be team-focused players. And the same thing now, they're, they're going to go after the discipline in sports, and it'll go from women's sports over to men's sports. And it's just an attack every day on our society about our moral values, the things that we were all brought up with. Uh, but, again, they are not leaving one stone unturned, they meaning the socialists, uh, communist side of the, the Democratic Party, they want to attack and tear down everything that built this country into the greatest country ever. It's astonishing to me, um, you know, that's all in this name of diversity, equity, and inclusion, they say. And in a way, then you're you're, minimali- you're minimizing women in sports. It's interesting to me that this has really begun in sort of, not the major sports, like you don't see men trying out for the WNBA. You don't see biological men competing yet in women's tennis, but you've seen a trans woman now competing, trying to get to the LPGA. You're talking about boxing here as, and and by the way, you're right. The Olympics punted on this by saying, you know what? Each sport can make their own, make its own decision about this. So we don't have to. And, uh, but it's just, you know, it's, it's astonishing to me that more athletes more LPGA golfers, more women swimmers than just Riley Gaines, uh, you know, more don't come forward and say enough of this. Why are you doing this to our sport? What is the fear that how, wh- what is the root of that fear? Do you think of coming forward and, and saying enough? Well, the, the media has everybody so gun shy of criticizing uh, all these different entities and we we have to be willing to speak up and if we don't speak up we're going to lose uh, i speak up every time i get a chance when it comes to anything to do with especially young people because young people need an opportunity to grow and have the opportunities that you and i had of, of experimenting on things of, of do i want to play uh, this type of sport do do i want to do I want to be bigger, faster, stronger? They, they need that opportunity and also to be able to deal with other people. You know, the, the thing that we're having now, this social media that's out there, our young people don't socialize. Uh, the only thing they socialize is when they go and they're around their teammates in a sport. Yeah. I, I can remember 15 years ago, uh, I walked into the locker room one day when I was coaching. I saw all the guys in their lockers listening to, uh, you know, music or or talking on their phone or looking at social media. And I immediately says, you know, this is not right. 
I mean, you've got to build camaraderie within your locker room. If you don't, you're not going to have a chance to win. I banned the phone. Now, I was enemy number one uh, by banning the phone in the locker room. But, you know, it, they got over that. And, you know, they started wrestling around and doing the things that you normally do to make friends and be friends and understand other people and, and where they're from and, and their strengths and weaknesses. So, uh, again, sports is so much a part of our lives. We're trying to tear it down. But uh, I, I think this is one area that they're going to lose. But as you said, people need to speak up. Now, parents are speaking up, mm -hmm. but individuals, coaches need to speak up more. Uh, they need to put their foot forward and say enough's enough in this. Yeah. We're going to lose women's sports. We're going to lose it if the, the feminist groups who built Title IX back 50 years ago, uh, if they don't start speaking up, we'll lose women's sports and we'll have to bring it back somehow. Yeah, it's we see a number of groups growing and the and the effort, you know, compounding. So we'll hope that that's the case. And like you, I can't even believe we're having these conversations, but but we are where we are. Before I let you go, Senator uh, Coach, I've, I, I have to I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about sort of the long lasting impact of your decision to stand in the way of some of these military assignments because of your stance against abortion within uh, being funded by the military. What, where does that stand right now? I know you stood down on that. What, what do you, what kind of impact do you think you made and maybe what kind of damage got done? Well, first of all, I brought it to light of what this, this administration was doing. They're breaking the law. I mean, you can't force taxpayers to pay for anything to do with abortion. Now, Roe Wade was kicked down to states and rightly so. Uh, I was all for every state voting for what they want to do with abortion uh, because you get a vote on it. If you do it up here, you make a federal law, your politicians do it or your uh, judges do it in the Supreme Court. The people across the country in their state now have an opportunity to vote for that. And so uh, by doing that, uh, you know, they, they, they get to make decisions. Now, the, the decision I made was to go after the Biden administration for spending money on travel for abortion in the military. Now, listen, they've had, a, they've had abortion uh, laws for 40 years in the military. They'd work perfect. But because we're away, the Biden administration said, we're going to get involved because they're federal employees and we're going to allow this to happen. Well, you can't do that. They're breaking the law. But I held their promotions for about 11 months, but I had a bunch of Republicans even start because they were afraid of their election coming up. Everybody's worried about getting reelected up here. You know, I could care less. I'm going to vote for the American people and do what's right. And if people in Alabama don't want to send me back, just vote against me. But I, I, I think I proved a point uh, that, uh, you know, if we we'll just stand up and and hold them to what they're supposed to hold up to, then we can we can make some progress up here. But eventually I had to let go, Michelle, because they were going to change the rule, a rule that would have been in effect for 150 years. They're going to change it because I had a hold and some of the Republicans were going to vote for that. And it just. It, it, it hurt to know that I was I, I lost on that one, but we're going to continue to fight because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm going to fight for life in this country. We had 70 million abortions last year around the world, 70 million. And uh, sooner or later, we got to we got to start understanding that we got to stand up for the young people. And and again, it goes it goes deeper and farther than that. I you know, I, I am. I am sort of on the the fence on this one. If, if I have a, uh, if I'm a school teacher, let's say, or a coach, and I have a young woman who gets in trouble, come to me and say, I got in trouble and it's going to change the trajectory of her life. I, I think she ought to be able to make that choice. Um, and so while I, am I love babies and I wish I had had more of them and all the rest, I don't think I can force someone to have a child is are do you have exceptions that you're okay with? Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally with you now. Uh, and, and again, I dealt with young people. I've dealt with what you're talking about with young men that had the yeah. problem with their girlfriend or whatever. And it really puts a, a burden. Okay. A burden on, on a lot of people. Uh, when, when something like that happens, I just, what I would do is I would sit down with them and explain the circumstances and what you can do, what you can't do, do it the right way, uh, understand the future, but you make the decision. The government shouldn't make the decision for you. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. There should be exceptions, but I am for life. There's so many people that, that don't do that for the right reasons. I mean, they just do it to be doing it uh, instead, of, instead of going by, by, by reasoning you know, about their future. 
And so I think there's, uh, there, it's, it's the biggest uh, issue in your and my lifetime in this country. And unfortunately, people get elected and unelected for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we've got to use common sense. We've got to use common sense, but we have to also be able to give good advice. And a lot of people don't give good advice, Michelle. They really don't. They, they, uh, they just say, hey, do what you got to do, but give them all the options and talk about it, pray about it. And at the end of the day, usually they'll make the right decision. Yeah, I, it's a, it's, it is a contentious issue. Uh, and my fear is, um, because I'm outside of this issue, I'm a general, I'm, I'm more of a libertarian, but I feel as though the conservative stuff that I do stand for fiscal conservatism and, and other, and the small government and all of that, um, it gets hurt by this image of conservatives of being so, so pro life that they are anti-choice, that they are you know, that they are not reaching out to all women. And so that's where I get concerned about this issue. And I know it's a big one for a lot of people, but I, I, I do fear that conservatives, Republicans, libertarians like me uh, lose some of the argument because we're perceived as these people who want to interfere in someone's choice. Yeah. And I understand that. And I think that was the importance of the decision of Roe Wade is saying, listen, politicians and the courts don't need to be involved in this. The people of their state, where they live, their communities, their cities, if you really believe one way or another, you have the opportunity now to go out and push whatever you uh, believe in and try to get that voted through. It gives the people of this country a voice, takes politicians out of it. The people, and again, I never dreamed Kansas is a very conservative state. Kansas, right off the bat, voted for uh, for the right to have an abortion mm -hmm. in the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. and, and again, if that's what they want to do, they had the ability to do that. But don't get the government involved. Uh, we need to get people involved. And I think more and more that you see of that, you will see people make decisions uh, probably for the right reasons and not for political reasons. And again, it, to me, it's... Uh, and again, you know me, I, uh, I've known you for a long time. Uh, you know, we've had some conversations on the sidelines, but when you deal with young people, usually it's the people that's going to be involved in this. You just got to, you, they've got to have guidance in of what to do and, and when to do it and why to do it. Before I let you go, we've got this border bill. Are you for it or against it? Oh, I'm totally against it. This is not a border bill. This is a border giveaway, Michelle. We, we've got a terrible problem in this country. And I just had a, a group of sheriffs from the state of Alabama here. And they said, Coach, we're getting overrun with drugs, human trafficking. We arrest an illegal. We'll turn them over to ICE or some other entity. And they'll deport them and they're back within a week. And I'm talking about whether it's grand theft, rape. Uh, so we have no control of what's going on right now. And if you can't control your border, it's over. There's two things that that really got me with this bill. And there was a lot of them. Uh, but one was they took the jurisdiction from the border, the fifth circuit, which is Texas and Louisiana, the court system and moved the jurisdiction to Washington, DC. Well, these clowns up here, you know, they're going after president Trump right and left. And it, and it's just very unfortunate. Can you imagine what they're going to do to our border policy if we pass this? And the other is uh, there's 10 to 12 million people here that's come across the border illegally since president Biden took office. And I asked, what does this bill do for them? Nothing. They get to stay. But that's wrong. Uh, they got to go back. We can't afford these people. It's costing us millions and millions and millions of dollars every day to take care of these people because they can't work. They have nowhere to live. And now they're taking over our VAs. I'm on the Veterans Committee, and our veterans have been standing in line forever to get health care. Now they're, they're, they're taking them into the VAs, the community care systems. We are just totally broke in this country. We're bankrupt and we're trying to do more things than we can do instead of taking care of the American people. So, no, I am totally against this. And hopefully we can get President Trump in office in 10 months. He will stop it day one and we can get back to the real life in this country and protect American citizens. Well, and in the interim, uh, isn't it true that Joe Biden could flip a couple of switches, which he has the authority to do? to slow things down, the, the, you know, the things he undid the minute he took office because they just wanted to undo everything the previous administration did. 
uh, he could redo those things. Every law is in place for him to totally shut the border down, Michelle. He doesn't want to do it. Uh, matter of fact, when he first got in office, people forget this. He goes, what's another million people in our country? Uh, we can handle another million. Well, uh, 12 million people later, they're still coming in. And again, this is this is all but design. Uh, you know, they want to overload our system. Our education system is is 20th in the world now. Michelle, think about that. Our government, our public education system is 20th in the world in education. We ought to be first because we spend so much money, but they're being overrun. Uh, all of our high schools, it is, it's a disgrace to what's going on to the American citizen, the taxpayers that's paying all these bills, yeah. and to the young people. The young people that's coming up in this country now do not and will not have the rights that you and I had growing up in the greatest country on the face of the earth. So if we don't stop this, this is really going to continue to be a, a, a terrible, terrible problem. And if, uh, say they get another Democrat in, in the office uh, next year, it'll be over. Our country, as we know, because we can't stand, I don't know whether we can stand another 10 months, much less another four and a half years. But it's a huge problem to the criminality of the country, the bankruptcy that we're in, and being able to just take care of everybody. It's just, it's a shame. Senator, Coach, Tommy Tuberville, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We know how busy it is out there in that clown show you talked about. Right. Thank you, Michelle. I don't agree with everything Senator Tuberville says. I think we are closer on abortion than I thought, which is good to hear. But he needs to make that abundantly clear, not only to his own constituents, but those who would criticize him for being radically conservative on that issue. That abortion issue is very, very effective for fundraising and for dividing people, for dividing people into this group of so-called, you know, ultra uber right MAGA extremists who are anti-abortion at any level and people who are pro-choice. We've got to listen to each other and be adults and have a grown up conversation about abortion. It's it. I don't think it's as complex or complicated as we try to make it. Or maybe it's more nuanced than we allow it to be. And, and yes, we ought to have sound decisions about it. As for biological men competing against women, I'm sorry. It's crazy. No one will change my mind about this. If you were born male, you were born with certain chromosomes and a DNA makeup that is male. If you are born female, same thing. And there's a reason that we decided that women should have their own category in all of sports and men should have theirs. Now, if we want to create a separate category, well, it's open to everyone. Let's have a conversation about that. But infringing on women's opportunities, on women's spaces, on the advancement of women in sport to accommodate a tiny minority a tiny minority of people. Oh, but you don't want to exclude them. Okay. But then if you include them, then you exclude some women at that. It's at their expense because there isn't room in the swimming pool for everyone. You compete for that room. You compete for that lane. You compete for that space on the podium. There isn't room for everyone. It's about merit. Life ain't always fair. And that's just the way it's got to be. So if you can't win on the bicycling podium, maybe you go win somewhere else. But this is as simple, cut and dried, fair as it gets. It's just not fair to have biological men compete against women in sports. The end. With that, I encourage you to be brave and do good. And we will see you next time. 